Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm taking you thrifting with me to the Goodwill outlet bins and throughout the video, I'll show you what I brought home and how I'm using some of my items. Here we go. I just wanted to take a minute because I'm structuring this video a little bit differently. I'm taking a cue from my friend Julie over at Thrilled Thrifter. She shows her haul throughout, which requires a lot of work. I admire her for doing it. Um, <laughs> it's a different way of editing and it requires a lot of editing time. But for this particular haul, because Chris and I went to the bins and we were there for a while, I got a ton of footage. And if I had done all the footage and then at the end done the haul and how I'm using the items, the video would have been an hour long. So what I did instead is I'm splitting the footage. There will be two bins videos. So this is part one and then there'll be a part two. And within each bins footage video i'm showing the pieces that i pulled that you might see in the bins one caveat i did hold on to several christmas items that i'm keeping so any christmas items that i'm bringing to my little resale booth i will show you within this video but i'm holding on to the ones that i'm keeping for myself for a collab that i'm participating in hosted by my blessed nest and the collected wow well, the collection vintage uh towards the end of the month i forget the exact date it's at the end of november so you won't see the christmas items that i'm keeping for myself you'll see the ones i'm bringing to my little shop and then you'll see lots of other things and how i styled them in my home throughout the video so let's go ahead and go to the goodwill outlet bins Right out of the gate at the Goodwill Outlet Bins on this day, I found these rooster canisters. Just love them. And because they are ceramic, they were 49 cents a piece. I picked up all three of the rooster canisters. Two of them live here on my countertop near my tiered tray. One has oatmeal and one has rice. They are not vintage. They are from the Cracker Barrel, but I do think they have a vintage vibe. They are in really good shape. You can see just minor little chips. There is a chip on the back of the large one, but it's not going to be immersed in water or anything, so I'm not too worried about it. And the third one we set aside and put on top of our refrigerator because there's no room really on the counter for three, but I think it looks cute here with my little egg basket on top of my fridge, just adding a little festive flair up here. In the same box, I found a piece of Longaburger pottery this is something I started finding at thrift stores last year. I do not have this one. I mostly have smaller ones and I really like this one because it has a lid on it. Some of the Longaburger pottery pieces have embellishments either in blue, green, or burgundy, which were the popular colors at the time it was made. But I actually prefer the plain ones the best, followed closely by the ones with blue. I put my little piece of Longaburger here on the shelves at the bottom of my stairs. Sorry for the funny lighting. Always hard to film down here, but you can see to the left of it are two other little ones. I think those are meant to hold votive candles. Not entirely sure, but they're super cute. If you're enjoying this video and you love thrifting, I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time I upload a video. The Vikings are our football team here in Minnesota, and so they're pretty popular. I was looking at this mug potentially to sell in my shop. It does not have any chips or cracks on it, which is what I was feeling around the top for. So I washed it up and I'm going to bring it over to the pink elephant. It does have its original NFL sticker on the bottom and I will bring this over and I think it might be a good inexpensive gift for a Vikings fan. And I did actually put this basket in my cart for a while, but I wound up leaving it behind. I mean, it's nice, it's got the nails and everything, but I'm just trying to be selective about what baskets I bring home because I have so many. I 
I always check in wallets just in case someone left a little cash behind. There were a lot of Christmas ornaments in this bin, not really vintage, but just cute ones that I thought I might be able to put in my booth at the Pink Elephant. I picked up several ornaments. It looks like someone who was either a firefighter or mother or wife of a firefighter donated a collection. And these are great. They're mostly Hallmark. So there's two like old fashioned fire engines and they don't look to have any like broken pieces or anything. So I don't know how they <laughs> survived the bins, but I was super excited to find these. I'm definitely gonna put them down at the Pink Elephant. I'm not sure if this one is Hallmark. I couldn't find a mark when I was filming this, but maybe I wasn't seeing it, but I think he's super cute. Little, little mouse firefighter. And then this one is marked, it's a bear, and it's also marked as Hallmark. Yep. Maybe they'll give us a little deal on it. Why is that? That's really cool because it's really heavy. Uh. They did give us a deal on this iron. I believe it weighs like six or eight pounds. They only charged us $2, which is fantastic. And it's going to go into my collection. And you can see here, uh, if you pull up on this little center knob, the handle comes out. I guess that's how you would heat it up. I do need to, I was showing you, it's kind of dirty. You need to wipe that out. And then you just kind of uh, pull up on the knob again, which I was struggling with a little bit. And you can see it kind of clips in and then it's reattached. I decided to add this to my displays on my bookshelf because I'll show you in a moment. I have other antique irons here. I use them as bookends. So here's one, one of them, my friend Jamie from Border Bananas found for me. And I forget where I got the other one. I think it was at a thrift store recently. I don't really remember, but I love these two as bookends. Now the one I just got, you'd have to like put on its, you know, flat on its bottom to have it as a bookend. You couldn't use it on its side like these, but I still think it looks really cool in the display. Nice to have a set of three. Chris noticed this bin had a lot of vintage and I actually pulled a lot of vintage linens out of this bin. There were a lot of adorable aprons, but this woman who used these really used her aprons. A lot of them had like stains and rips. So I was going through trying to find the best ones. And I know some of you will say, well, you can get stains out. I am totally aware. I just don't always wanna have to go through that trouble because I see so many vintage aprons that I can be choosy. So I brought home several of the aprons. I think this one I'm going to put on my little dress form in my craft room for the Christmas season. It usually stands behind me when I do hauls in my craft room. So I think that will look super cute. It is a little faded on the bottom. I was showing you the tag here. It says gourmet gallery. A little faded on the red fabric, but I'm keeping it so it doesn't really matter. I'm also going to keep this one. I'm probably going to add this to my dress form now with my display of fall colored aprons. I love the orange rickrack on the pocket and I'm going to keep this one. They clearly were made, I'm guessing, by the same person, possibly from the same pattern. 
This one doesn't have rickrack on the pocket, but it does have it around the bottom. I just think it's such a cheery pattern. I love this one. It's green with white polka dots and it has two pockets, which is so cute. You can see there's a center uh, seam on the waistband, which was a little bit different. I do wonder like, were they short on fabric and they had to seam two pieces together because there's not usually a seam there. So that that was interesting. And that one's in pretty good shape. And then this one, even though it has a stain, I kept it because my room was pink and white gingham when I was a little girl. It totally reminded me of my bedroom. It does have these stains, which I will try to get out. And I loved the embroidery on it. I thought it was really pretty. It's machine embroidered. So I don't know, it could be from the 80s, who knows? And then I did pick up this Christmas table square and it's pretty, it's in very good shape. And then I picked up this tablecloth. Haven't decided if I'll keep this or if I'll bring it to the shop. And then lo and behold, look what I pulled out of the bins. Now it's dirty, so the color looks a little funky, but it's a pink oil lamp. What? I couldn't believe it. Now this is a tough one. I did try to clean it. I, I'm gonna need to read online, like how do you clean an old oil lamp? Cause I emptied the oil into a jar, so we'll dispose of that properly. But then there's almost like this tar sludge in the bottom. So I might go after it with Dawn. I was thinking of like those commercials where you see like the ducks getting cleaned off with Dawn. So maybe that would do it, but look at the gorgeous color. You can see on the base, that's the true color. It's like that depression glass pink, so pretty. So I think this is gonna be gorgeous in my collection once I get it cleaned up, but I'm gonna read how to do that. This box was a treasure trove of linens. It was amazing. It was like I pulled out some and then more and then more. It's great. So this was a light blue doily, which I don't have. I've not seen this color before. It's a little faded, but I don't care. It's so different that I'm going to be keeping this one for myself. I'm also going to keep this one. It's a different pattern than I have. It almost looks like arrows or something. I don't know what you would call that, but I just thought it was really neat. And it's a rectangle, which also makes it different from a lot of the ones that I have. This one is really delicate. I'm not sure what I'll use this one for. This might be one that I craft with. Not sure exactly, but it's really thin and delicate. So that one will go into my stash. And then I also pulled this one. I'm sad that this is so dirty. I love this one, gorgeous pattern. I will try to clean it up and then I don't know if I'll keep it or sell it, not sure, but I will try to get out that stain. I also found several embroidered and cross-stitched pieces. This one is stunning. It's butterflies, which I love as a motif and it's blue and white. Yes, please. So this one I will be keeping. It's gorgeous embroidery with tons of French knots, which I love. And I just think it's so pretty that ombre effect in the blues, you know, it goes from lighter to darker. Very cool. This person must have liked blue and white because there were several blue and white linens and I was not complaining. Oh, this one does have stains on it, but I might be able to get those out. They are not on the actual like embroidery floss. So that's why I was like, well, maybe I'll be able to get those out. And that one was part of a set you'll see here. Here's another piece with the same flower motif on it and the cross, not cross stitch, crocheted edge. It is cross stitch, but it also has a crocheted edge, which I thought was really cool. And then here's another blue one, but this one has other colors in it. So this one I'll probably sell. I feel like I have things that look like this. I don't need another one that looks like that. So that one will probably go to the shop. This one is so pretty. Haven't decided what to do with it yet, but look at the crocheted edge on this. It has like two colors in it, like a pink crocheted through the white. Very cool. I thought this was really different. This one I think I'll keep for my red, white, and blue decor because it has that true red and then a pretty blue flower. I think that'll be pretty in my red, white, and blue stuff for summer. This is a dishcloth. I might actually put this out for Christmas. I know it's not Christmas, but I do red and green and those almost look like, ah, I mean, they're not Christmas flowers, but I think I could use it for Christmas.
Here's a tablecloth that I found. Not sure what I'll do with this, but I never leave a vintage tablecloth behind because you can always make pillows or dish towels from them. And this was pretty. I'm going to wash this and iron it and bring this one to the shop because I don't really do yellow. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. <laughs> I love this so much. Chris just found it. I found this little roast mailing. Is that how you say that? I always forget. Roast mailing piece. It's supposed to be, I don't know, is it like a stein or a pitcher? I mean, obviously it's decorative. That word, N-O-R-G-E, which I'm not even going to try to say, means Norway in Norwegian. And I think it's really pretty. I like the colors. They don't really go with my stuff. Like that orangey red is not my jam. So this will probably go to my shop. I have sold every piece of rose mailing that I've put in my shop. There's a lot of Swedish and Norwegian people here in Minnesota and they like to collect it. See here, there's a nativity. I had baby Jesus and Mary. And in the next film here, there's Joseph. I reunited them. I could have picked them up for the shop. I didn't think about it, but I knew I didn't want another nativity for myself. This Care Bear Cubs. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, this is just Yeah, like, all of it. Just feel by this stuff, even if I don't keep it. Kmart yeah. stickers. Old Santa. Yep, oh my gosh. Yvonne. Fantastic. Yeah. What's that Christmas card? And oh my gosh, what is this? This is fantastic. Mob Short 2003. Ah, 2003. Chris is finding all the good stuff. Look at this vintage garland made to look like lifesavers and yeah. plastic candies. Fantastic. I brought home all of that wrapping paper that you saw just previously. And then I also found this little blue footed dish really pretty light blue glass and I don't know when it's from I don't I didn't try to date it but I will put this in my shop this doesn't really go with the look I've been going for in my home which is definitely getting more like rustic and primitive but I do think it's pretty and it will fit very well into someone's decor I originally had picked these up, but then I found Made in Taiwan stickers on them. So they weren't the old glass that I was hoping for, and I wound up leaving them in the bin later on. And I picked up this wrapping paper from the bin, as well as some gift bags. There was a lot of vintage wrapping paper here. It's be kind of boring to go through it all with you, but I picked up a lot. <laughs> This piece was cool, but the flashing was coming off. You can kind of see it's like chipping the, the coating on the glass. So that was in pretty rough shape. These were cute teapot napkin rings, but I don't really sell napkin rings and I don't need these for myself. I have napkin rings that I like to use pretty much for every table setting these days. I don't really want to have multiple sets, so I did leave those behind. I really like old clipboards. They're a great craft item. They're also a fun way to frame a cross stitch project, but these were glued back to back. I think they must've come from school classrooms. So I left those behind. Oh wait. I don't know what that is. This is new. <gasps> There's so, a new set? This is because this movie comes out next week. Oh. So yeah. All a right, new set that. to start collecting. Chris did take home that toy as well as one other McDonald's toy and 
I believe that one is out of its wrapper on his shelf and he'll be looking for the new ones from that set. We always like to look for them at the bins. It's something fun to treasure hunt for. I found this picture for the shop actually, and I really thought it was pretty. It almost looks like a rug or something that got framed. I'm still not sure exactly what it is, but it has a cool vibe to it. And I think someone might like it for their home decor. I brought home the tortoise and hare themed tic-tac-toe board. I really like this a lot. I don't know if I'll keep it to put into my primitive decor in my bedroom. One of the motifs is like old game boards and I think this has like an old feel to it. If I decide not to do that, I will bring it to the pink elephant. I thought this was a cute piece that someone had made at some point to hold their remote controls. If it was spring, I might have picked this up to possibly sell in my shop, but I really don't have a place to store it. So I left that piece behind. It was pretty dirty. I would have had to do a bit of cleaning on it and that's all better done outdoors, but our outdoor hoses and things are packed up for the winter. Okay, so that's all that I have for you for this part one of the Goodwill Outlet bins. Again, I will have another part two with the rest of the footage and the rest of the items that I brought home sometime in the next week. Um, thanks so much for watching. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Have a great start to your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.